I think there is still this lingering misconception that studying outer space is kind of this singular thing, um, when in reality, as you mentioned, solving for space solves for Earth. Studying the universe helps us infinitely understand our lives here on our own planet. Um, I'm curious that it's such a simple concept, but it seems tricky to ingrain in, in a new generation. And through well, this initiative, through all the things you're doing, how? <laughs> well, here's, well, speaking of how, there are people running around in the United States, or well, in the world, on the electric internet, thinking out loud, or whatever the expression is, that the earth might be flat. <sighs> It's a, what? It's a 21st century. So s space exploration or planetary science is more important than ever. Just that, that anybody would even joke about it is weird. And so uh, this anti-science movement that we have in the United States right now, well, in, in the Western world right now, is, is bad for everybody. And so the more we explore outer space, the more we learn about ourselves. Now, talking practically, all these hurricanes that are coming ashore in the southern states, we know where they are and where they're coming from and give them names because of space assets, because we have space assets, because we have satellites and cameras and image processing systems and the extraordinary computer models that enable us to predict their past based on uh, barometric pressure readings. I mean, it's amazing. And this is all science and it's all space science. Furthermore, I talk all the time, my grandparents really didn't have any understanding of relativity, especially when they were little kids, it hadn't even been discovered yet. And they saw the development of nuclear weapons, the discovery of the neutron, mm -hmm. development of nuclear weapons, and then this idea to use nuclear energy to make heat and electricity. Well, now, Astronomers, astrophysicists, cosmologists are learning that we don't know about 95% of the, maybe it's 94, maybe it's 96% of the universe. We don't know what it is. It's dark matter in lumps in the cosmos, driven around by dark energy out there somewhere. Well, in the next 30 years, who knows what discoveries will be made that will be as profound as relativity just you guys your your mobile phone depends on both special and general relativity to get the right answer to get it to work and so we take all that for granted but it's it's the exploration of space that led to these profound uh profound improvements or uh, quality of life for all, so many of us and when it comes to 4-H and agriculture, agriculture, as I mentioned, depends on all of this technology. Depends on all of this. But today's, a, by the way, the first day of fall, first day of autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. Woo! <laughs> uh, we compute that or assign that based on observation of distant stars to find the Earth's place in its orbit. So we all take it for, we all go to Staples or wherever it is and buy calendars and we all take it for granted, but it's all a result of space exploration. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, clearly it's, I mean, it's integral to every facet of life on earth today that we study space, but I'm curious about your thoughts on human space exploration, because while that's a part of that, it's really a unique piece of the puzzle. Um, I mean, with the recent Demo 2 launch from SpaceX, uh, we're really kind of pushing the boundaries. Of commercial crew, uh, commercial yeah. crew, people have been talking about it for 15 years. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be, it's really finally happening. And it seems that all of these things that seemed almost outlandish 10, 15 years ago are coming to fruition in very real concrete ways and so especially now the possibility of returning humans to the moon and landing humans on mars is more tangible than ever ever before 28 billion uh i read space news this morning 28 billion to get to the moon by 2024 oh my god <laughs> no pressure important? well as ceo of the planetary society i am open-minded but 
it's politics are such an important part of this thing. I don't know how long, how sustainable that budget is. We'll yeah. see. Just, you know, when you get humans there, that's when everybody goes wild. That's when people get engaged. You know, the former Soviet Union landed rovers on Mars, on Mars, on the moon, brought back rocks. Nobody really cared that much. You got a person walking on the moon, two people, then everybody went wild. But I remind us all, part of the reason that President Nixon nixed, ha, 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 the Apollo program was he was afraid people were going to die uh, in this endeavor. And it just, I just, if you look back and read the documents and study it and watch the stuff, you, if there was a near run thing, as we say in sailboat racing, I mean, these guys and gals almost did not pull this off. I mean, people, they barely had the capability to get to the moon and get back and it was done. Yeah. Uh, and it was a result of the cold war. That's why it happened. It was not a result of this great, oh, we must explore the cosmos to know our place within it. That was a tiny part of it. It was competition between the United States and the former Soviet Union and the Soviet Union. Uh, and now the reasons to go are kind of out of tradition that uh, we went there before, so people have to go back there. And if you like to look at internationally, the Chinese Space Administration is going wild. They're doing fantastic things. Uh, there's a rover on the far side of the moon and uh, they're preparing all kinds of lunar missions and they have a space station and all stuff. So this competition may reemerge. But in the meantime, we at the Planetary Society point out that planetary exploration is a tiny fraction of this. It's less than 10% of, of uh, the kind of money spent on human spaceflight. So, I mean, there may be a good reason for that, or that's what it costs kind of thing. But keep in mind that the cool, amazing discoveries are on other worlds. Definitely. So you mentioned kind of the political aspect of human spaceflight, which obviously is part of the larger, you know, relationship between the government and science, which again, as you mentioned, there is this kind of almost anti-science movement that has swept. It's really, yeah. yeah, it's it's really this bizarre. This 4-H thing is really good. These, these students are not anti-science. They are, they're part of the future. <laughs> Definitely. It, it seems you know, more important at this specific point in history now than ever to be engaging students and young people and the future in this way. Um, and, you know, you're obviously as on board as any person could possibly be. And I, I'm curious just how you feel about that kind of fighting against the powers of evil with science and a league of extraordinary young people. <laughs> Well, that's, that's what it is. I mean, that's why I did, or we did the show, the Science Guy show years ago, was to, out of concern for the future of the United States, especially, because uh, science is how we get all these things done. Science is how we made these discoveries about what happened in the ancient dinosaurs, okay? But it's also how we feed 7.8 billion people. It's with extraordinary agriculture that's been developed through science. You know, there's a whole thing about uh, organic food and uh, genetically modified uh, crops and so on. But you would not be feeding 7.7 .7 people, 7.7 .7 billion people without genetically modified crops. And farmers have been genetically modifying crops for uh, decades, well, for millennia, about 10,000 years. And I just like to remind everybody before we go on, <laughs> farming's not natural. If you stop farming, it goes back the land goes back to something else, whatever, a prairie, a forest, a, a marsh, whatever it was before. So uh, this is all science. And I like to point out, uh, I like to point out in the U.S. Constitution, uh, Article 1, Section 8 refers to one of the jobs of the U.S. Congress is to promote the progress of science and useful arts. And to me, useful arts uh, is engineering or architecture or building bridges, whatever it would be in the 18th century. 
And the students in the 4-H thing are all into additive manufacture, computer coding, uh, robotic exploration of stars, and so on. So they are on board with the progress of science. The flat earthers, the anti-vaxxers, the anti-maskers are not on board with the progress of science. And the thing is, it affects all of us. When you deny the body of knowledge uh, that's been discovered through the process of science, you're holding all of us back. And this is why it's such an important time. Chelsea, are you going to vote? Oh, yeah. I made sure I... I vote every election, but I double check to make sure I was registered. Please vote. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm excited about the future. I mean, when the young people are running the show, when people like these 4-H winners are in charge, things are going to improve or change for the better very rapidly. But it's, you know, as we always say, it's going to be a, a close call. Yeah. Or we I mean, don't get the climate so far out of control that we can't pull it back very easily before we have this generation of uh, young people engaged in science to change the world. <laughs>